Well, good early morning, my YouTube friends. And I do mean early. I'm still up, and you see what time it is. Look there, 3.24 a.m. I apologize for the quality of this video because I'm, I'm recording my computer screen. I want to talk about a repair, but it's not my repair, but I've been helping a fella. I've been walking him through this. Um, a fella called me earlier today. He came across my YouTube channel and came across my Onan generator stuff. And he was having problems with his own end generator, his own end 5500 surging, which is a common problem. And usually you can go to, I got two videos about this. Oh, one video, sometimes you can take care of it without disassembling the carburetor. If it's not really bad, you can just, uh, by, by carefully removing that black cap you see in this picture and removing the screw, um, you can clean it up really good. What happens on most surging situations is the fuel in these generators, you know, they evaporate when we don't use them. And as the fuel evapor evaporates away, it leaves behind a hard varnish. And every time it does that, every orifice, every hole in the carburetor slowly gets smaller and smaller as the varnish builds up. So over time, it finally gets, you know, each jet gets smaller to a point it starts getting leaned out and starts to surge. Now, sometimes on this main jet, you know, it's, it's that black knob. It's just an altitude knob. It only gives you about a quarter turn. But in fact, that knob hidden behind it is our main jet for the carburetor. Just like old lawnmowers and rotor tillers of yesteryear when, you know, before EPA got involved, you could adjust your own carburetor, make it rich, make it lean, and, and fine-tune it. Well, if you remove this little black cap, then that gives you access to the screw. You can give it a full turn. And sometimes that'll take the surgeon away. You're, you're in good shape. Sometimes it don't. If it don't, then I got a separate separate video here where it's very thorough cleaning where you, I disassemble the carb completely and I go through all the processes of cleaning every orifice, every jet, and usually that'll get you going. Uh, the fella had tried this, but it, he still had surging. So then he said, okay, let me just buy another carburetor. So he bought a, a carburetor online, of course from Amazon, maybe the $35 or the $50 carburetor, not the genuine Onan carburetor, which is four or $500. So he tried that, but it still did the same thing. So I thought, well, that's, I, I know buying those carburetors on Amazon is a crapshoot. Uh, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But the fact that both of them are still doing the same thing, I told him to check the intake manifold. I've never seen it myself or done that repair, but I've read about it or heard about it happening to other people. So he, he did that and he sent me a video and I wanted to share this video because that's what he found. I thought it was really cool. So let me show you this video he sent me. Uh, quality is not the best, but you'll get the ideal. And it looks like he was working at night like I do. So, and as, as a tip, I told him maybe try, start, try spraying some starting fluid on it. Because sometimes, you know, if you have an air leak, if you spray starting fluid on it, then, you know, you can make the surging go away. Uh, now, I noticed he was kind of just spurting it, spurting it little spurts. And, uh, but maybe if you continued spraying, it could make the surgeon go away momentarily. But I'll show you in the video, you'll, you'll see what he found here. Okay. But that's what he's doing constantly, that's that constant surgeon. But there's an interesting thing we found on this other side. Turn the volume down. Now if you look closely, you'll watch it separate. See the top plate? See how, see how it opens up? Now watch it right by that rivet there. Yeah, there's a good shot. So that top plate on that intake manifold um, is separated. It's only held on by rivets, I believe, from the factory. And of course, there's some. I mean, there's there's a picture of what it looks like when it's removed. And here's I got. A, I got a PDF file showing it, and I got the part number. I'll, I'll add the part number below this video. But uh, if that happens to you, if you've got constant surging, even after you've cleaned the carburetor, put a new carburetor on it, this is probably your problem. Now, the next thing I'm not sure of is if he's going to have enough room to get that intake manifold out. It's uh, let me see here, because you can see how tight. You know, there's four, four bolts that hold that thing on. Well, you can see right here, quantity four. So you gotta get those bolts out before you can get it, remove the intake manifold. But um, my concern is that you know the big fiberglass top box that's on top of the the engine 
is going to prevent him from getting that loose. So there's normally just four bolts, got two on each side. If you maybe can get that loose, maybe if you can just raise it up just an inch or so. I don't know if he's going to remove it, remove the generator, drop it a few inches or what. I'll find out later from him after he does the repair. And uh, I can add that to the notes below the video. But I found this kind of interesting. I wanted to, to get this on, uh, online for you. Oh, and another tip, and I've done this before in the past. You notice he's got it running without the air filter cover on it. Well, in order to do that, you need to put your nuts on, on here. Because if you don't, the carburetor can't seal against the engine. It's not going to run at all. And if I remember right, remember right, I think there's a shoulder. So you may act, may have to put like a 3 8 nut or something on here. Act like a spacer. And then put your, I think these are 10 millimeter, Or at least that's what the socket is. And then that way you can tighten down the carburetor. Get the carburetor tight. And start the engine up and have it run. And you can troubleshoot without have Because that, with that big black filter cover on there, you can't see what's going on. It hides all the linkage. So that's a handy little little trick for trying to troubleshoot when you're when you got surging. Because those sometimes I've man, manipulate them like when they're they're surging. If I can pull the choke butterfly and create just a little bit more richer environment, it'll run just fine. But but if you let the butterfly all the way up, then it'll start that surging again. But you know, like I say, most of the time, well actually you can see in the video, see he's removed the cap, so he can make it adjustable. That's what I was talking about earlier. That black cap. That black cap is on there. It only gives you about a quarter turn, so very little adjustment at all. But if you just get a hold of it with a pair of pliers and just slowly wiggle, pull it straight off, it's just like a little knurled area on there that holds it in place. Then, you know, then if you want to get fancy, you can take a Dremel tool like I did and just cut a little slot in it. And then that way you can use a screwdriver or you can just use a pair of needle nose pliers and ro rotate it a little bit off and on. Now something else I wanted to point out, I think I've seen other people do this too. Now if you was on a tight budget and you didn't want to spend, uh, I've, I've looked this up, see there's like $108, where else, there's another one here, it's 136 So, but, you know, maybe in the future if they're, I think the most places I pulled up they're showing out of stock. So if there's a situation you couldn't get one or maybe they go obsolete someday, there is another way to fix it. Um, so the other way is this stuff here, this Durko Gray. See, it's, it's good up to 575 degrees. Um, this is really good stuff. In our lawnmower shop where we fix steel chainsaws, the, we use the, this type of product because with the chainsaws in the crankcase, there, there is no gasket. It's just a machine surface that you put this on and then bolt it together and let it cure. And it's really good stuff. And it's good for super high temperatures. So... Uh, that would be something you could try in a pinch. You know, you just have to separate all this off, clean it off, put it back in there, maybe put new rivets in it or screws instead, clamp it up, let it let it sit for 24 hours and put it back on. But if you can get a new one, I would recommend getting a new one because you don't want to do this job twice, you know, because it, it's probably not going to be a whole lot of fun. I know this ain't a fancy video, but I just wanted to get the information out there for you. And here's the part number. Right there it is, manifold intake. 154-3067-03. So I'll put that below the video in case you find this situation and you need an intake mount of volts. So I, I believe this would probably work on the Onan 5500, maybe the 6000, 7000. I need to confirm that, what all different models this uh, same intake design is used on. But I want to get this out there for you. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. See you. Bye.